Here ready, Pastor Kevin, welcome to River City Online. Glad you're here with us today. We're in part three of our prayer series entitled Prayer Walking. It's been fun to just go through this uh, little short series on prayer and looking at petition and intercession and the Lord's Prayer and how Jesus prayed and how the disciples said, show us how to pray, Jesus. And, and he unpacks the Lord's Prayer for them and tells some amazing stories. And we look, last week we looked at this idea of intercession and how uh, we're, no, we're not just taking our own needs to God, but we're also those who are gap standing we're interceding, we're standing in the gap for others' needs as well. And so we're gonna expand on that today and talk about this practical tool called prayer walking. And for some, that'll, this will be new, and for some, it will, will be you know, something they've heard of, and maybe you regularly do it, so awesome. We just really believe God wants us to ramp this up in, in River City Church and in our community. But last week, we talked about how gap standers, those who intercede, they do three things. They kick passivity to the curb. We just, we just really took the challenge to go, no, let's be those, let's not not pray, let's pray, let's engage, let's stand in the gap for others, not just our needs, but others' needs. And so I've been so proud of you, River City. You've done that this, this last month. You've been, you've been joining together with other people in different house, lighthouses of prayer across the community. Uh, last week, we, we went up on top of the Lewiston Hill and prayed over the valley. So fun and so enjoyable to join together in agreement and pray together, and we talked about intercession and victory are linked and we looked at the story in Exodus 17 where Moses and Aaron and Hur are up as jo up on the hill as Joshua is down battling with the children of Israel and there's this incredible uh, battle against the Amalekites and and as Moses has his, the staff up in the air there's victory and then as he gets tired and weary his arms start to drop the other the Amalekites start to prevail and so Aaron and Hur uh, Moses is interceding for the battle Aaron and Hur start interceding for him and actually physically help hold his arms up they see the connection and how intercession and victory are linked. And as they do that, then the victory happens and it did happen for them. And so we see this important picture that that's what we're called to do. We're called to intercede for others, intercede for each other. And these layers of intercession are so key and so important. And then we just talked about how linking arms is so key and, and, and partnering together. And so uh, I want to talk to you again today about this practical uh, tool called prayer walking. I want to give some credit here. There's a couple books I want to recommend to you. A Trial and a Sword by Fosner and Davis, and then uh, Prayer Walking by Hawthorne and Cook. I, I gleaned some things from them, so I want to give them credit, and it'll be worth you getting those books if you're interested in knowing more about prayer walking. All right, so I, it, it's been fun uh, to talk about prayer, and my heart's growing in prayer, and I've been praying more than ever, and I'm just loving it, and I'm enjoying my time with God and interceding for you and others. And, uh, and as we've been doing that for the community this last month, uh, going into July, the thing we're gonna do as part of a prayer strategy is to prayer walk. We're gonna prayer, our goal is to prayer walk the valley, uh, including Lapway and Asoton and Clarkston and Lewiston. And so that means literally we wanna cover every street uh, of the valley in prayer. And so let, let's talk about what that looks like and how to do that and what we've got in person on Sundays uh, on the walls here in the auditorium is maps. And so as you prayer walk your neighborhood, come in and, and use a highlighter and highlight that part on the map and let us know what you've covered in prayer. And it'll be fun to see this map grow in the highlighted areas and how much we've covered. Now you might go, Kevin, I'm not, a, I'm not much of a walker. Or I can't, that's hard for me. Well, you could prayer drive, you could prayer bicycle. Maybe you're a runner, you could prayer run. Maybe there's stuff you already do that you could just add prayer to it. <laughs> so anyway, think about that. Just want to say, God, show me what my part is in this. And so as you know, many of you know, by 2030, we have this vision at River City Church. I just rolled this out this spring that we believe that River City Church is called to plant 30 churches, develop 300 leaders, and make thousands of disciples by 2030. It's a seven-year vision. And we're really, we've already got four church plants and we've already developed many leaders, but we're believing God for more. And uh, and so part of this goal of this prayer strategy is to say, God, we believe you called us to this, but we recognize that we can have a plan, but we need a prayerful strategy. And so that's part of what's happening here. We know God wants people to come to know him. He wants darkness to be dispelled, people's hearts to be softened and come to Christ for them to be free. And you and I, he chooses to use us to make that happen. He, he chooses to have us pray his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what a privilege that is to do. 
And so uh, let me give you a, a definition of prayer walking. I like the simple definition, on-site praying, on-site praying. On-site praying is simply praying in the very places where you expect your prayers to be answered. So it, it, it's kind of simple. It's praying while you walk or <laughs> praying while you drive. That'd be prayer driving, right? Uh, it, it, now, when you walk, I think it's a little, I think it's a little better in the sense of uh, you're, you're a little slower, you can observe more and see more, uh, but you do what you gotta do, okay? And so you're inviting Christ's presence into that place where you're at, that neighborhood, that uh, if you're praying around the school, or you're praying around the uh, buildings downtown, you're just praying God's presence into those businesses, into the people who are there, and you're saying, God, let your kingdom come and your will be done. You're asking God's grace to flow, his blessing to flow, his favor to flow, his goodness, his healing, his protection. And look at Deuteronomy 11, 24. It says, every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours, shall be your territory. Now, this was God's way of giving the children of Israel their promised land, and that's the context and, uh, and so, he, he, but, he, but it's interesting that he's talking about a physical, when you put your physical foot in a certain place, God, it's like you're claiming ground or territory, right? And, um, and in Joshua 1, 3 to 4, it says, every place that the sole of your foot will, I, I notice on the screen there, notice it says, I highlighted will, will tread upon, I have given you, shall be your territory. So you, so you see a progression to the promise from Deuteronomy there to Joshua. And it's saying, listen, as you go, as you're on the promised land, you will possess the territory. It, it, but it's a process. It's a process of that. And I like what Fosner and Davis said here. It says, what this suggests is that the very act of walking into their promised land was, in, was the activity by which they would receive their promised land. Thus, as they walked in, God handed over territory to his people. It's like you, they took ground as they walked, as they went, as they moved, physically moved in. Now, today in our valley and in, in our community, uh, we're not asking God to physically take land or take over uh, people or kick people out of anything. We're saying, God, let your presence, let your, king, let your rule and reign uh, grab a hold of hearts, God. Reveal your love, reveal your presence to people so that they will surrender their lives to him, to the one who made them, to, to let people know that are far from God, to realize, wait a minute, I didn't even know God loved me, that he existed, he wants a relationship with me. You and I are praying, God, let that happen. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. And so we are asking, I, I wrote a few things here just on the screen for you. We're asking God, move people's hearts. When we're prayer walking, we're saying, God, move on people's hearts. We're asking to open their eyes to see Jesus. We're, we're asking for Christ's presence to saturate that that home, maybe you're just prayer walking in your home. You literally could prayer walk every house, every rather every room in your house. Start there and then move out to your neighborhood and then move out to a little farther expanse uh, in, in a little region. And maybe, you know, maybe if you only walk a mile typically, you know, do two, do three, do four, and it'll, it'll be beneficial on all fronts, all right? You're, you're asking for the schemes of the enemy to fail and, and come to nothing. You're asking for God's love and light to to expel the darkness in those places and for the darkness to go and evil to go in Jesus' name. And, and as you're walking, you're gonna see other things that happen, but that's what we're doing. We're saying, God, bring your presence, increase your presence, grow your presence in this place, every place we put our feet. And, um, and so we're bringing the light of Christ to all those places. And, I, and, and you know, I, I mentioned to you that we're believing for, for thousands of disciples and, and we know that that's not just gonna be through River City Church, but we're believing that God will give us a portion of those to, to see. And, and we want the kingdom to expand. It's not about one church, it's about the church big C in the valley, in this region to expand and the kingdom to expand. And so we wanna do our part in prayer, partnering in prayer with others, prayer walking in July for this. And so we're gonna, we're gonna believe for the hurting to be healed, the broken to be mended, the addicted to get free, uh, right? Those who are far from God, to come to know him, marriages to be restored, forgiveness to flow for friends who have been estranged or family members to be estranged, to reunite in their relationships. I, I mean, I, I just, as I start praying more and more for the valley, I just think, what about this community becoming a place where cancer continually just decreases? Could we believe God for a cancer-free zone in the valley? Could, what, about, what about crime, like decreasing? to the point that it's like, you know, maybe, what, what about shutting the jails down? <laughs> 
And you might go, Kevin, those are people's jobs. <laughs> okay, well, listen, if God's blessing is flowing in such a way that, that uh, jails shut down, it, it'll, it, there'll be plenty of other opportunities for people. Okay, don't worry about that. But let's ask God for his presence and his blessing to pour out. And so l- let me give you a Uh, the first point here is that prayer walking, one of the things prayer walking does is it expands your vision, expands your vision. And so if we look back at Abram or let's just go with Abraham because he changed his name to Abraham. Excuse me. Uh, He he takes this long journey and walk, if you will, uh, God's command through a land of promise. And this walk opens up with a series of prayer events for Abram. And uh, he establishes a public worship among new neighbors and gets that gets expanded to nearby nations. And then there's all these examples of uh, on site uh, prayer walking. Of course, he was a nomadic uh, guy and God asked him to go and he he did it. And so um, and then God asked Abram to examine the land and the heritage he wants to give him. And so I want to look at just one little chunk of scripture here. And we find that the uh, Amram's extended family, Lot, he ends up leaving because the family's growing so much. He, he goes and gets another piece of land, find another piece of land. And it's right after this that, that we, we see this chunk here in Genesis 13, 14 to 7, because God's saying, hey, I, I want you to take a walk of vision. I want, Abram, I want to expand your vision. Abraham, I want to expand your vision. I want you to see something that you're not currently seeing. And so let's look at it. It says, after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, look as far as you you can see in every direction. Look as far as you can see in every direction, right? North and south, east and west. I'm giving all of this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants, right? As a permanent possession. I mean, just stop there. That's just like, what? Wow, okay. He, he just physically, see. so in verse 16, and I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in ev- go and walk through the land in every direction for I am giving it to you. So he, so God is challenging Abram. He's saying, listen, I want you to get out there. I want, first of all, I want you to look and I want you to see it. Far as you can see, north, south, east, west, look out there. And then also I want you to get there and walk it. Because not only am I going to give you this land that's even beyond as far as you can see, but I'm going to bless you with an, to be a great nation. Many, 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 many descendants. And you and I actually are a, a fruit of that, an extension of that fulfillment in Christ. We are a blessed people to be, ble- to be a blessing. And so principally, now for Abram and Abraham here, he was, he was very specific. There was a physical land of descendants, but principally again, as you and I are out there prayer walking, putting our feet walking, God can, principally can do some similar things. He's asking us to see, he's asking us to see. He, he wants to expand our vision to see our community different, to see our neighbors different, to see what's, what God's up to in these places. And we're asking God again, to move on people's hearts and his presence to come to this places, the places that we walk and set our feet or that we drive, all right? So God is going to use this. I so believe it. So Abraham, he's saying, look up, see it. God uses the eye gate for Abraham. Open your eyes. And, and when God does that, we, we're, God gave us the ability to see and the ability to imagine. And he's saying, do you see that you're going to have all this? Do you see the descendants that aren't even here yet, but they're coming? And that begins to sow a seed of vision in him. And Abraham's like, okay, God, you're calling me to this. And so it keeps him going. He has some rough spots in there, but it keeps him going and keeps him praying. And so he's, he's really saying this to Abram. He's saying, do some on-site prayer research. <laughs> and I put this on the screen for you. Do some on-site prayer research. Ask God what he's already doing in that place. When it comes to you and I, he did this for Abram, but he's saying, for you and I, we can do the same thing. When you get out there and walk your neighborhoods or walk places in the city, in the community, Community, uh, you can ask God, God, what are you already doing in this place? Don't, don't just assume you know how to pray uh, for that. We, we're going to give you some things to pray, but every place you go is different, different people, different situations, different history. And say, God, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Ask him and, and say, Holy Spirit, tune me in to your nudges. All right. Ask God what he wants to do. Ask him how to pray and what to pray for. Right. He's giving he's giving us proximity to needs. When you get out there and walk the neighborhoods or drive the neighborhoods, you're going to start to see needs. It's going to give you and expand your vision of what's needed. You're going to see problems. You're going to see challenges. And then you're going to have to ask God, God, am I? Do you want me to be a part of the solution for that? Yeah. 
It's amazing. You know how it is. When you go visit or you go somewhere, you get a whole different perspective than if you just hear about it or if you just see it on TV or if you just saw a picture of it. But when you're physically there, you have proximity, it, you can feel it, you can sense it, you can see it. And that's what he was doing with Abram here. He's saying, okay, walk it, see it, look what, look what I'm going to do. God wants to expand our vision. And I, I couldn't help but think about Nehemiah as I was casting vision uh, for the, for the 3,300, 30, 30 leaders, or 30 churches rather, 300 leaders and thousands of disciples. I, I said to you, we looked at Nehemiah and it's in Nehemiah 2 where Nehemiah finally gets on the ground in Jerusalem and at night goes out and he walks the wall <laughs> with a few others, walks the wall, and he starts to get even a greater detailed vision of how to, how to solve this problem, right? God, he had given him the download a long ways away, but once he actually arrives in town, then he walks it and he sees it. And so much prayer and much vision was being laid out and done for Nehemiah. Now, I remember it was about eight years ago, uh, we, we made a move, River City made a move to uh, go to Clarkson High School. Uh, and be, between, you know, our current location and then, that's where we were. Uh, and we had an, a building years ago, and we really felt we were supposed to prayer, prayer walk and prayer drive Clarkston. And so we had lots of people doing that, and we did a similar thing. We had maps, and we were highlighting. It was so fun, and it was so encouraging as prayer, Clarkson was being bathed in prayer. My heart grew for Clarkson. I felt like God asked me to cover all of Clarkson, me personally. So I did that. I walked some, I drove some, I bicycled some, but I prayed throughout the whole, it took quite a while actually to do it, but I would just do it early in the morning, get up, go for a drive, go for a walk, go for a ride and pray through all the streets. And I tell you what happens is, it's like God starts to grip your heart for the people. He starts to give you a, a different heart for the people living in these homes as you're driving by or walking by, you go in. Ah, something, it's like God just does it. He just seals something. It's hard to explain, but I tell you what, it's a beautiful thing. So I wanna encourage you, it's really worth doing. And, uh, and here's the next thought, is that prayer walking helps us agree. Look at Matthew 18, 18 to 20. It says, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again. Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And so we see in verse 18 that authority has been given to God's people and his will gets accomplished as we pray, his kingdom come, his will be done. And so that was God's choice to, to have his will be done in agreement with the prayers, our prayers. So we're saying, God, what's your heart? What's your, I'm praying your kingdom come, your will be done. And as you and I pray it, it's like it releases God's power and presence in those places where we are. And so that's our privilege. And, and remember in, in uh, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. Now I send you, go make disciples, take this to your local area and to the ends of the earth. And so we've been given authority by Jesus to bring his kingdom and ask his kingdom to come and his will be done in these places. And then look at verse 19, it says again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything. That, that word and that metaphor really here is, is the word agree there means like symphony or symphonic. It's, it's, a, it, it's a working together, a unity of like musical sounds coming together. And when you and I are praying together, especially we can, that could be in a prayer meeting anywhere, but as you pray together, if you buddy up or get with one or two other people and go out and prayer walk, you can begin to agree together in those neighborhoods for what God's up to. You say, God, what are you up to here? And, and you're praying blessing, you're praying for God's presence and Christ's presence to come and just whoo, penetrate that place. And, um, and that symphony, symphonic prayer, united prayer, syncing up in prayer is such a beautiful compliment. And that's what Jesus is saying. Listen, that agreement really matters. And look what it says in verse 20, for two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. I like what Clark says in this quote. He says, it's a metaphor taken from, speaking of this passage, it's a metaphor taken from a number of musical instruments set to the same key and playing the same tune. Here it means a perfect agreement of hearts, desires, wishes, and voices of two or more persons praying to God. Ah, it's a beautiful picture, <laughs> working together in like a symphonic way, like a musical way, uh, prayer of agreement. Ah, so fun. So. Praying alone is fine, and if you can only get that done, do that. But if you could, you know, figure out who you could invite to come along with you and pray, even better. 
even better. We clearly know Jesus is there. He's, his presence is there with you in that moment. Remember, remember, prayer walking isn't for the spiritual elite. Uh, it, you might go, Kevin, I'm not really comfortable praying out loud. Well, you can, you can pray silently, especially if you're pr- walking alone. I would encourage you not to pray super loud or make a big spectacle. That's not the goal here. The goal is to agree with God and what he's doing in that area. And so uh, now if you're, with, if you're with two or three other people, it looks like you're having a conversation, but the conversation you are, it's just with God and with each other. And, um, and that's a beautiful thing. So just, just know this, it's, again, it's a tool. It's a tool to help us pray. And you know how it is when you're moving and you get the blood flowing and you're doing that and you're praying together, there's, there's, it's like a whole body prayer. It's so fun and so encouraging. Now, uh, I think what you're gonna find is and what I found personally is as you're out there walking, uh, you're gonna notice and sense a nudge occasionally from the Holy Spirit as you pray. And then the, this agreement piece, this, this kind of symphonic relationship in prayer is that you'll start to pray something and you'll, and you'll maybe have been nudged about it too, but somebody got to it before you do and you go, oh man, I got the same thing. And so you riff off that other person's prayer, they pray a little bit about it, then you pray about it. And it's confirmation, it's very encouraging. This has happened to me many, many times. I'm praying in a, in a group like that or praying on a prayer walk with somebody, they start praying about it and like, oh, or I start praying about something and they go, oh, I got the same thing or something similar or it just like dovetails right in. It's, again, it's that, it might look a little, feel a little different, but you can see how it just comes together again in that symphonic way. And so, I want to encourage you to, to just keep at that and do that and recognize that and ask God, Holy Spirit, show us, even as we're walking and praying, show us what you're up to and nudge us even how to pray uh, in, in agreement and alignment. And just remember this, prayer walking is not manipulating God to move. It's not a fancy formula, but it is a tangible tool that God will use and it will It'll expand your vision. It, it, it will help you agree. And, and, um, and it's what we're called to do. We're called to pray. We're called to intercede, right? And so this is just another way to intercede. You can intercede sitting in your living room, but you also can intercede walking on the streets, the neighborhoods and places in our community. And a sincere faith, you know, is really that, God, I'm trusting you. And I think prayer walking helps us grow that sincere faith, especially as we're doing it in agreement with others. I agree for these, my home and my neighborhood and the workplace and the places in the schools, places of impact, the hospitals, the, the businesses, Lord, we're believing you to move in these places and we're asking for blessing. I just think God delights. Look what Hawthorne says. God delights to respond to the requests of people as they extend themselves to him in sincere faith. And then, and then the last thought here is that prayer walking brings blessing. Uh, we prayer walk to bring blessing. Genesis 12, 1 to, 1 to 3, it says the Abrahamic blessing here. Let me read it to you. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing, right? I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. It's, it's easy to say it this way. You and I are blessed as, because, because in Christ, right, this, gets, this fullness of this blessing happened in the person of Jesus Christ. So you and I are, if you're a believer in Jesus, you're a recipient of that blessing uh, all the way back there from Abraham. So we're blessed to not hold it in, but to be a blessing. And so as you and I prayer walk, we're actually extending and, and taking the blessing of God and his presence to the places we walk, to our homes, our neighborhoods, our workplaces. And, um, and so one of the practical tools uh, we're gonna give you, and it'll be attached here on the notes uh, to this, this uh, message is, is a, a little prayer walking card like this. And so we, on one side, we've got a prayer walking strategy, just five areas of influence to pray as you walk, government, commerce, education, communication, and the spiritual atmosphere areas. And then on the back side, uh, a blessed prayer, an acronym, um, praying for the physical health, the body, praying for labor, the job finances, praying for emotional health or mental health, the social side of things, the relationship side of things, and the spiritual side of things, knowing and obeying God. And and there's literally have a few prayers. Let me just give you one, uh, one prayer that, that, for instance, is in the area of uh, the physical body. You can pray a blessing. In the name of Jesus, I bless 
and you fill in the blank. It might be, I bless this neighbor. I, if you know that specific neighbor's name, put their name in there. I bless Bob in Jesus' name with good health in his or her body. I'm asking for wholeness and, and, and found in God's peace. I'm asking you to, to just move in their family. I'm asking, if you know they're sick, then you know, I mean, obviously pray blessings specifically and ask for healing as well. So just these are just, you know, this is not, again, not formulaic, but it's an opportunity to pray blessing uh, and, and give you a jumping off point, a prayer point to help guide a little bit if you need that. So I wanna encourage you to use those. And again, we'll have those attached. And so, uh, and then remember that once you do some prayer walking, make sure that you, when you come in on, on a Sunday or you're in person, or if you, during the week, uh, we're here 10 to four, uh, Monday to Thursday, the office is open. You could come into the auditorium and literally go up on the map and highlight what you've covered. I, I, let's, let's saturate the whole valley in prayer, okay? I'd love for there to be multiple highlights over the same area. How about 50 people covered the same ground? That would be amazing. So let's do that, all right? Now, I, I wanna kinda sum up because some of you are listening to this and going, okay, this prayer walking thing, it's kind of new to me, Kevin. I don't get it. So I want to show you a video right now that just gives you a quick summation of how to do it. Here it is. Zoom a toolkit. Prayer walking. God's word says that we should petition, pray, intercede, and give thanksgiving for all people, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Prayer walking is a simple way to obey God's command to pray for others. Prayer walking is just what it sounds like, praying to God while walking around. Instead of closing our eyes and bowing our heads, we keep our eyes open to the needs we see around us and bow our hearts to ask humbly for God to intervene. You can prayer walk in small groups of two or three, or you can prayer walk by yourself. If you go in a group, try having everyone pray out loud. Conversation with God about what everyone is seeing and the needs that God brings to their hearts. If you go by yourself, pray silently or out loud if you pray with someone you meet along the way. Here are four ways you can know what to pray for during your prayer walk. Observation. What do you see? If you see a child's toy in the yard, you might be prompted to pray for the neighborhood's children, for families, or for schools in the area. Research. What do you know? If you've read up about the neighborhood, you might know something about the people who live there. Or if the area suffers from crime or injustice, pray about these things and ask God to act. Revelation. The Holy Spirit may nudge your heart or bring an idea to mind for a particular need or area of prayer. Listen and pray. Scripture. You may have read part of God's word in preparation for your walk, or as you walk, the Holy Spirit may bring a scripture to mind. Pray about that passage and how it might impact the people in that area. Here are five areas of influence that you can focus on during your prayer walk. Government. Look for and pray over government centers such as courthouses, commission buildings, or law enforcement offices. Pray for the area's protection, for justice, and for godly wisdom for its leaders. Business and commerce. Look for and pray over commercial centers such as financial districts or shopping areas. Pray for righteous investments and good stewardship of resources. Pray for economic justice and opportunity and for generous and godly givers who put people before profits. Education. Look for and pray over educational centers such as schools and administration buildings, vocational training centers, community colleges and universities. Pray for righteous educators to teach God's truth and protect the minds of their students. Pray that God would intervene in every effort to promote lies or confusion. Pray that these places would send out wise citizens who have a heart to serve and lead. Communication. Look for and pray over communication centers, such as radio stations, TV stations, and newspaper publishers. Pray for God's story and the testimony of his followers to be spread throughout the city and around the world. Pray that his message is delivered through his medium to his multitudes and that God's people everywhere will see God's work. Spirituality. Look for and pray over spiritual centers such as church buildings, mosques, or temples. Pray that every spiritual seeker would find peace and comfort in Jesus 
and not be distracted or confused by any false religion. Finally, here are five ways you can pray for people you meet during your prayer walk. As you walk and pray, be alert for opportunities and listen for promptings by God's Spirit to pray for individuals and groups you meet along the way. You can say, we're praying for this community. Is there anything in particular we can pray for you about? Or say, I'm praying for this area. Do you know anything in particular we should pray for? After listening to their response, you can ask about their own needs. If they share, pray for them right away. If the Lord leads, you may pray about other needs as well. Use the word bless to help you remember five different ways you can pray. Body, health, labor, job and finances, emotional, morale, social, relationships, spiritual. In most cases, people are grateful you care enough to pray. If the person is not a Christian, your prayer may open the door to a spiritual conversation and an opportunity to share your story and God's story. You can invite them to be part of a Bible study or even host one in their home. If the person is a Christian, you can invite them to join your prayer walk or train them how they can prayer walk and use simple steps like praying for areas of influence or the blessed prayer to grow God's family even more. Prayer walking, another simple tool in the Zume toolkit. Wasn't that cool? Simple, uh, easy to follow. Listen, it's, this doesn't have to be hard. It's just getting out there and doing it. And God will begin to show you and download things to pray for, I promise you. Uh, maybe partner up. I think that's a great way to do it if you can. It's better actually. But if you can only do it alone, then do that. That's why maybe you're like, I only walk at 4.30 in the morning. Well, you, there might be a few people to get up. I got up about 4.30 this morning. So listen, whatever works, uh, go for it, all right? Whatever works for your schedule. So let me, I, I wanna just uh, pray for you, pray for, for this, for us in July, that God would stir our hearts to get together and prayer walk. And so let me do that. Jesus, thank you uh, for your presence. Thank you for the ability to intercede. Thank you that you call us to do it. Thank you for the power of agreement. Thank you for that symphonic prayer, God, that, that you want to do. And I believe you're going to stir our hearts to prayer walk our valley and even beyond that, Lord. I pray it would ripple to Moscow and Pullman, Genesee and uh, Pomeroy, Lord, that, that there'd be prayer walking happening all around the Northwest, Jesus. And go beyond that as well, Lord. But we're just asking, Lord, specifically for our valley, stir the hearts of those that tune in here, hear this message of River City to really saturate our valley in prayer. We're believing you, God, for transformation in hearts. Lord, we're believing you for healing. We're believing you for an increase in miracles. Lord, we're believing you for cancer to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Cancer go in Jesus' name. And God, I, I thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the good news of Jesus. And I, I want to read to you Acts 4, 11 to 12. It says, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else but Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And I don't know where you're at today, because maybe you're tuning in this and you go, and I don't know about this prayer walk thing, but I don't even know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, he loves you, he died for you, he took your sin and my sin upon himself. He died on that cross. He was perfect, sinless, but yet he stood, in, he interceded, interceded for you, took your, he paid the price that you and I couldn't pay on our own, that we deserve death, but he carried it to the cross. He paid for it. He died, he was buried, but he defeated death and rose again. And Hebrews 7, 25 says that he is continually interceding for you and I on our behalf but he offers a gift to you of grace and love and forgiveness. And if you want it, you receive it by faith, putting your trust in what Jesus accomplished. If you want that, pray this prayer. Jesus, I receive that today. Thank you. I, I believe what Pastor Kevin's saying, that there's no other way to the Father, but, but Jesus. And I receive what Jesus did on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness, salvation. I give you and surrender my life to you today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Make sure you let us know if you made that decision. Also, hey, prayer walk, let's do it. See you soon.